morning. It's good to see you again. I'm here at the uh, uh, City Hall and Horticulture Department. And uh, I talked to Thomas and we thought safety would be something that we should probably talk to you about. And it's uh, something important to me. You know, I ran my business for 50 years and uh, I've been a gardener for since I was working on my dad since I was nine. And I've got more pets and damage to this body uh, in gardening. And everybody thinks gardening is very safe. And I just want you to know, it's like everything else, it can be dangerous. And uh, I mean, in everything that we do, if you're mowing a lawn, digging a hole, working in a greenhouse, whatever you're doing, um, there the possibility of danger. And uh, we can start out with your body. One thing I've learned over, over all my years is don't bend over a lot. Use your knees and crouch down. Kneel if you have to. Protect your knees by putting down a pad. If you don't have a pad, a lot of time I tell people to have a burlap or uh, an old blanket. Put that for your knees and take good care of them. Because uh, old gardeners, a lot of them nowadays, are having new knees put in. So you take good care of your knees, okay? The next part of us, and most of you know, because it's written up a lot, carpal tunnel. And, you know, we, <clears throat> we use our pruners a lot when we do a rose bed or something. God, you're pruning, pruning, pruning. Well, you got to break that up. Put them in the left hand. Maybe pick up some stuff, break up some. Don't just sit there pruning with one hand all day long. Or almost guaranteed you're gonna when you get older you're gonna have carpal tunnel. If you don't get it when you're younger, and running a chainsaw, carpal tunnel. A lot of guys have problems with that also. Okay. Uh, the next thing a lot of times gardeners, unless you're a big operator, use a pair of head shears like this. You know, you want to use those head shears and a lot of little things that you work with to change some between your hips and your shoulders. That's where you want to use it. You don't want to use it way up here or way down there. Then you're really putting a lot of pressure on your uh, shoulders, your neck, and your elbows. So a lot of gardeners have shoulders put in now, elbows. In my day, we just suffered, you know, and uh, we never got them fixed, you know. So even now, you know, uh, I can put this hand up real good. This hand, I can do pretty good, but after a while, this shoulder bothers me. So I know that's what it's from. It gets arthritic and who knows what other damage you've done. Uh, to these uh, joints and uh, th this is just safety I'm talking about on your body uh, the other one that Thomas knows we tell you in class wear a hat because you, you're outside if you're in San Francisco uh, it's foggy it's the rays still come through I had a little cancer here to cut that off got a little bit here there I have gardener friends got their ears chopped off because they wear baseball caps all their life. I never wore a hat until about 20 years ago. After my wife died, my new girlfriend said, oh, you gotta wear a hat, protect yourself. Well, I saw wearing a hat, but it was too late. So I, I wear a hat now, and we encourage our students, wear a hat, uh, wear uh, uh, sunblock. When you, when you go out in the morning and maybe after lunch, it doesn't hurt. Put a little bit on. That's the other thing. It doesn't hurt. You may not believe in it, so who cares? But it doesn't hurt you. So why not try it and protect yourself? Because you got to remember one thing that modern science has done. It has provided that you have a good chance of being 100 or more. In my day, people were 65. Oh, that was really up there. If you must be 90. You were the ancient ones all on, in the neighborhood. Okay? Then we get into other kinds of safety of how to use your tools, knowing where you are, where your fellow
fellow employees are, where the um, public is, and where cats and dogs are, and to even uh, be conscious of birds. Because a lot of time we, we put poisons out. I'm against most or all poisons because you know, cats pick it up, dogs will pick it up, birds, and you don't want to be killing. If you want to kill something, you want to know you're killing it. I don't want you to go, uh, put stuff out and kill things that you have no intentions of killing. You know, so you have to be careful. Uh, in our uh, work, my son one time uh, he felt bad. He was catching birds in a rat trap. It was snapped down, and you know he put some food for the rats and the birds in it. He had, to, he had to change that, and he had to hide it real quick before the client would have seen it. God, she would have had a cow if she saw the bird in the trap, you know. So, because a lot of people say, don't use poisons, use a trap. Well, there's something wrong with using traps also, you know. But uh, when it comes to safety of your uh, fellow uh, workers, you've got to be conscious of what you're doing all the time. You're always better when there's somebody else with you. So gardeners that work by themselves, it's just like hunting or fishing by yourself. It's more dangerous than if you're with uh, a couple other people. You watch out for each other. You see somebody doing something wrong, yell. Get their attention. You know, don't do that because a lot of times when we do tree work and stuff, you're so involved in what you're doing up in the tree, you're not paying attention. And the guy on the ground that's hauling brush, he sees what you're doing. He says, hey, hey, hey. You know, start waving the arms and anything. You get your attention. That don't do that. And uh, you, you save people. So, buddy system, muggers. Yeah, it's, that's what it really is. Well, you know, uh, Thomas knows I did uh, diving for about 20 years, and that was it. And it it's uh, arranged on a buddy system. You're not supposed to dive alone. So my wife was my buddy. When she passed on, that was the end of my diving. And we used to watch out for each other. We would go away from a group when we are underwater, and we didn't care. As long as we had the two of us, and uh, if one of us didn't feel right, they said, we go up, we both go up. Sometimes she would tell me, she said, you know, like, where are we? And so I tell you, stay down, I'm going up. And I go right up, I'm watching her. This is the way we're going. And uh, we never had any problems. You know, never. So that, that's good to remember. So, Safety, you know, a lot of times we're, we're thinking to uh, I talk to Thomas, you know, everybody in their truck should have a, a uh, first aid kit. They should know how to use it. We, you should know um, through our gardeners, and I think in class, that we think we have one. Um, uh, what do you call it? We teach them how to compress and do a uh, CPR. CPR? Yeah. attitude is more people do CPR, more people would be still alive. Because by the time they get there sometime, it's a little late. But all, all of you should know, you know, you, you have a cut or something, clean rag, compress it, hold it tight, you know. Uh, remember to call 911. A lot of time Thomas knows uh, I've been brought to the hospital, uh, you know, unconscious and everything. But we get there faster than you could get the fire truck. By the time we, we've been, I, I got cut one time, I hit the head, and I think we got there 20 minutes. It, it take you 10 minutes to get the fire truck to come out. And so you, you have to make those decisions. So if you're not qualified, can't do it, 911 is it. You, you should know, and if you don't know, 911, that's what it's for. You know. So, you know, we have. Uh, Anything in safety that you can think of when you're home, 
and uh, a lot of time in the bigger companies, they have safety meetings once a month, or maybe more often, but, you know, and have protocols for all kinds of things that could, could happen, and uh, they make sure that everybody knows that the whole crew, some of these crews are, you know, 50, 100 uh, employees, and so everybody's got to be on the same page. So if you're on a little two or three man group, you could do the same thing. You should all uh, be on the same page and uh, encourage each other. And as Thomas said, maybe just use it as a buddy system. You know, you know when you see somebody, pardon me, get up on a ladder or something, you know, come down one rung. Hmm. You should all know that. We can give you that in class. Never stand on the top rung of a ladder. Come down to. Okay, so uh, those are probably the, the little synopsis of safety, the way I would start you out, and you can build on it uh, on your own. Okay. See you next time.